uh, at the backdrop of uh, Lekka River. And uh, what has been happening has been uh, something that has uh, attracted the attention of um, many uh, uh, people and investors and potential investors, uh, uh, as it were. Uh, one of them who spoke earlier is um, uh, uh, visiting uh, this country uh, from Bank of Nevis International Limited, or Boni uh, for short, um, Michael uh, uh, Prest, uh, whom I'm privileged to uh, be able to speak to uh, right now. So uh, again, welcome to Zambia. And uh, you already expressed how um, uh, amazed you think this country you know, you, which you think this country is, describing this country not being landlocked but landlinked, and in a sense saying there's uh, so much opportunity. Um, uh, what's, what in the national has given you s this kind of impression? Well, <coughs> first, I'm keeping social distancing, and I, and I thank you for that welcome. I think Zambia, I described it as being landlinked as opposed to landlocked. That changes the nature of the narrative. The, the audacity of the opportunity here is unique. It's, uh, and as we saw this morning when we went with M Mr. President to see a fish farming project, that tells you the capability. Now, can you imagine one opportunity, a financier like me steps in, we scale that up. We, instead of having one, perhaps we have 20, then we move to 30, then perhaps we move to 100. So that tells you the scale of the opportunity. As an investor, what do you look for? You look for a welcoming um, environment. You look for enabling laws that allow you to get along with your business, but you look for vision and leadership. So this is what Zambia has. It has a stable polity. It has a 17 million population. It's surrounded by eight neighboring countries. That in itself ensures that Zambia, to all intents and purposes, is a hub. Now, can you imagine in that hub, people like myself, we invest because we see the possibility of the possibility establishing a financial a fintech financial platform but a platform that allows you to engage with all sectors of the community from the rural farmers or maybe cooperative fish, fish, fisher ladies that we sorted out I was about to say fishermen but now I say fisher ladies um, to urban urban professionals and then further up the chain to the high net worth and those institutional investors the possibility of the possibility is awesome now we invested in an institution called invest trust bank because we realize that going forward, it's no longer a brick and mortar proposition. We intend to bring into the market basically a fintech proposition. And why that? If you look at the at, uh, mobile phone penetration in the, in, the, in the country here, it's pretty high. So that tells you that all the way down the chain, all those who own a mobile phone, they've crossed that mental Rubicon. They are now consumers. They'll be consumers of financial products. We'd like to also look about introducing alternative energy into Zambia. Can you imagine the possibility of the possibility? You have alternative energy, the sun, solar, sitting alongside hydropower, hydro, hy hy hydroelectricity. You change the nature of the feedstock. You make Zambia self-sufficient. And from that point, in terms of power and energy resource, as I said, land-linked, you now begin to export that to the neighboring countries. That's the potential that Zambia has. Uh, as a close, what's your plan? Our plan is we, we, we backed our plan. We've made the first step. We've made the investment in Invest Trust. We're going to sit down with our partner, our shareholder, and we're going to turn that institution around. It, it used to have 100,000 customers. We're going to go beyond 100,000 customers. We're going to go up to 150, 200,000. You, know, you never know. We're going to add that to our own strength. What are our strengths? We have an international outlook. Our bank, we say, is a bank which has a window to the world. Same thing with Investrust. First, national footprint, then regional footprint, and align that with international footprint. And But also, most important, align it to the interests of ZCCM and IDC. When it becomes a useful bank to those institutions, the future is whatever we work hard with our partners to make it. So we're excited. We came here today. We're at the backdrop of Lake uh, Carib. I'm astonished by the beauty, I have to say. It's still breathtaking to me, but it tells you, on a more serious level, it tells you the possibility of the possibility and the audacity of the opportunity that is Zambia. In a post-COVID, post-vaccinated world, Zambia is the takeoff story in the Sadek region. We'll be following you on that. Thank you very much for your time.